practical reasons. Don't yawn while I'm talking. Um, <laughs> very off-putting having a colleague yawning right at you when you're trying to be interesting. So I've been thinking why it is that a lot of people in the vintage community come to vintage through an interest in 50s fashion. And you can see in popular media how... Let me see. Not on camera how easily relatable 50s fashion is you know it's got that kind of young fun vibe on the circular skirt think of film grease that sort of rockabilly look or the simple easy to wear shirt waisters although they were around in the 40s too i guess anyway that your new look fabulous as it is is not that wearable on a day-to-day -day basis you need to be in the right frame of mind to <laughs> make that kind of a statement but i thought it was interesting that people get interested in the 50s first and then come to the 40s and that oh no 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 would you mind not it would be best not and then get interested in the 40s or especially early 40s time that wartime era and i realized that when you look at how fashion is portrayed on the internet or in reference type articles the words used tend to be words like grab conservative austere king decoration military lines none of which sounds very appealing and yet it's not my personal experience of collecting clothes from this era which often have I hope that's not coming through on the mic you squishing your space hopper toy. Is it? I'm not sure it's a good idea, Rabbit. Shall we take it away? That is not my experience of this era this from like 39 to the early 40s uh, my experience in collecting dresses from this era is that they are full of ingenious detail and wonderful embellishments and yes the skirts are shorter narrower in general but to say that clothes were less fanciful and embellished than the 30s <laughs> isn't saying much because clothes in the 30s i love them but were very fanciful and very embellished so being plainer than the 30s is not to be plain fabulous decorative elements often added by home dressmakers which to me always makes them uh, more interesting and they range so much in terms of techniques there were all kinds of needlework magazines and so many ideas for decorations which <laughs> is something that i want to do Let's kind of look at some of my vintage needlework magazines with you so these techniques range from ruching sharing smocking embroidery applique uh, Trapunto, Soutache, so many lovely decorative techniques and shaping like the scallops you can see on the neckline of this dress. So by today's standards, not plain and austere <laughs> at all. <laughs> so I thought it would be interesting to look at some of my collection. There were two things that will... <laughs> encourage me to want to buy a dress from this era the first which we'll look at another time is if the print is especially interesting to me so for me that will be a super floral print or a novelty print all because the dress has particularly interesting details from a sewing perspective so my dresses the ones i'm going to show you all have particular embellishments that i think are really interesting either if you're a collector of vintage dresses or you're a seamstress because these decorations were pretty well of my collection all oh 
one or two done by home dressmakers. I mean, all of them are decorative elements that home sewers can add to dresses today. And I also want to show you some of my wartime dress patterns because they likewise suggest all kinds of ways that decorative features can be added to dresses without using too much fabric. They are economic with fabric, but that economy with the fabric actually encourages a real sense of ingenuity with how to make the most of it. So let's get on and <laughs> look at my dresses and their decorative design features and elements. Should we do that? Shall we? Would you like a kiss first? Mm, yes, please. Yes, please. Mm. This green and white checked or played 40s dress has this sweet little peplum which just creates a little fullness at the hips which allows you to create that female shapeliness uh, despite having a straight skirt. It's got these cute little pockets and you can see they're hardly pockets at all they're really shallow uh, but they've got the extra decorative element of those green buttons which are also on the bodice and the peplum and the bodice are um, cut on the bias to create those chevrons with the uh, green and white stripes and that contrast with the skirt which is cut on the straight of grain and 40s dresses often play with stripe and direction or the direction of checks and it's it's a really pretty and interesting feature and of course it means pattern matching uh, which has gone quite well on this dress and just showing you it's got a kind of grown on sleeve which of course uses much less fabric than a puff sleeve but to create a little bit of width of the shoulders it's got this little triangular shoulder pad so that just helps to create a shape which is a kind of bit wider at the top a little wider at the hip and to, to give you that sense of a dipped in waist or you know having a waist and <laughs> I'm just noticing that there are belt loops on this dress which I hadn't <laughs> realised before I've been wearing it without a belt. So there we are, another belt to make. It never ends. But yes, a really pretty little summer dress. And this is an interesting dress. It's CC41 label, which means it was part of the utility scheme. So made to high design standards, but with the economy of fabric and I'm just showing you this little kind of sharing panel it has just on the kind of lower waist area create that kind of gathered panel at the front which you think would be a bit of a <laughs> dangerous area on the lower tummy but it seems to fall all right and it's got these frills across the shoulder and then really economically just on the very top of the sleeve there and then this really pretty dress, which has smocking both on the bodice and on the hips. And you can see that you obviously need panels with quite a bit of extra fabric to create that smocking. So this panel that I'm just outlining on the bodice, that's been added in with extra fabric width so that the smocking creates that nice kind of gather draping over the bust area but obviously including extra fa fabric in panels is much more economic than just extra fabric <laughs> all over the dress and it looks really sweet up the hip line and then just creates two gathered panels down the skirts and a, a really interesting feature on this dress is these novelty buttons which aren't buttons you'd have a hard time buttoning them they're false buttons with press studs beneath and 
I thought you could actually even use like odd earrings, you know how when you lose one earring, it's such a good little idea for just creating a bit of something more decorative and different. And this dress, I wanted to include it for, it's mainly for its very interesting pockets. It's a sweet little 40s lilac dress with just a little row of glass buttons um, down the bodice. But it does show how there's no need to just have a square or rectangular pocket sewn on. You can create these interesting shaped pockets and it also has this kind of pleated front and the last buttons on the bodice are pleated on the pockets and they've just done this like really interesting little shape i mean sometimes you see a little kind of gathering at the top of pockets but it's just to remember that pockets can be any shape that you want them to be and it just really adds something really different to a dress and this is an interesting dress I haven't got an example of me wearing it because it's quite damaged and it needs some work I got it on the cheap <laughs> because it's got this very faded shoulder line somebody's hung it up in the sun it's got this just little very straight simple peplum to give that feminine shape it's got a kind of insert of little crocheted panel but mainly the interest is this fabulous soutache it's almost like a false pocket in soutache now to create soutache especially with self fabric like this it does mean cutting out a lot of fire strips which are stitched together to form these little kind of snake like uh, pieces of fabric which you can then arrange into a design I have done it it's quite time consuming <laughs> the fact that the strips are cut on the bias makes them nice and pliable so you arrange them into your looped design and it's quite tricky actually making the loops or whatever pattern you're using making them the same size creating the design you want um, in the size you want with all these <laughs> little bendy bits of bias binding you can see why these dresses are comfortable because it looks lovely and it is also <laughs> quite a time consuming but wonderful technique to see and then I just want to show you these kind of little shoulder pads it has just to give that the shoulders just a kind of little tiny bit of extra puff and now this dress is interesting because it also has a very different kind of soutache so rather than creating strips of bias binding from the fabric itself this dress I think is so clever because somebody has used literally think it's just different widths of piping cord and embroidered them in a sort of abstract flower design onto the dress and those seed heads that I'm showing you close up are actually French knots but because the cord used to create them is quite thick it's reduced this sort of seed head look and it's just been done randomly kind of over the bodice but just so pretty and the fabric is it almost feels like linen but i think it's uh, heavy cotton and that's the design that you can see over the skirt too and just to show off the dress <laughs> here i am walking around in it um uh, the miracle of this video, which was shot by my mother, is that my head is most of the time in shot. As soon as I paddled here, I was suddenly joined by about 50 other people. And another soutache idea. So this little russety brown dress has green piping soutache, which is literally a piping cord that has just been caught down with hand stitching. And it's done in this with this almost like a kind of little bolero effect. 
and that's just a little close up and you can see they've just wiggled around this green piping and then hand stitched it in place on the dress and it just goes around the back to form almost like a kind of false belt around the back and here I am at a 1940s event wearing it sadly <laughs> this isn't my car though <laughs> I wish it was and here I am at a, another 1940s event in this corduroy dress I'm just showing you the label because it's got that sort of distinctive kind of 1940s type typeface and because this dress is corduroy, it's just lasted really well. It has no issues to it. But it's another example of kind of easy soutache technique where a little piping cord has just been hand stitched down in a abstract wiggly design. But it also has these all buttons down the front and kind of close up of the soutache to see how easily that's been done and you can see just those neat little hand stitches and then these little loops for the buttons have been done with bias strips as well so that they're nice and pliable and of course this that button fastening uh, is time consuming to do but it does look really pretty and it it makes all the difference so it's a close up of those little kind of ball buttons and this dress also has these kind of pretty little ball buttons and another example of a very simple soutache to do so the, these strips of fabric, self fabric from the dress, haven't even been on the bias. They're, they're just cut on the straight and they're literally just folded over, folded over, folded over, folded over. And then two lines of machine stitching join it to the bodice. And then this extra little decorative feature is this double collar. So it's got a kind of its own blue self fabric collar and then this pretty little white collar over the top and then that's also echoed on the cuff just to create another little um, uh, kind of pop of white on the cuff and <laughs> here I am uh, wearing it and this is a dress that I bought as a wounded bird and I'm just showing you the belt because to add fabric because the sleeves are disintegrated so I created a new belt and new sleeves and just a little inset in the v-neck because <laughs> it was just such a, a pretty little kind of amber clasp but it shows how little details on a 40s dress uh, just made all the difference and the main reason I wanted to show you this dress was the little yoke detail so it's been ruched on the shoulders and then these little decorative self fabric covered buttons just added along the yoke with that little bit of gathering at the shoulder so this red crepe dress has this wonderful frill around the hem and it's been created using a strip of fabric with a line of stitching down the centre pulled to kind of gather it up and then the hem has been turned over twice and stitched by hand catching in this wiry piping that creates this little frill around the edge. You can see that careful little hand stitching there and it has its belt ties which is showing you just attached to the waist there and a little button opening on the left and then these gorgeous ruffles are attached to these sleeves and all the way up the shoulders too and you can see they fall in an almost asymmetrical way and then underneath there are some rows of gathering stitches just to create some folds of fabric over the shoulder and bust and just illustrating how the threads that run down the centre of that strip have been pulled up to create those gathers and I wanted to show you this little 40s dress too 
because of its design feature of the bib which has been decorated really simply with applique and this is the dress I wore to present with the scallop neckline and also a scallop design around the waist with daisy embroidery. I just thought I'd show you too some of my 1940s patterns so you can see how these little details that don't take up very much fabric suggested in the patterns. See the middle there, she's just got a little button down front. So you've got that sort of shorter A-line skirt and less puffy sleeves than the earlier part of the 30s, but you've got a little ruffle. This example where you've got this like decorative little square neckline but the whole dress is made more interesting by having the scalloped and button front. This pattern, I've just seen that's 1939, so right at the start of the war years, we see that the skirt still has some of its fullness. The bodice is interesting. So here, late 30s, you've still got the puffed sleeves. Then this pattern from 1942, kind of really interesting fabric <laughs> arrangement. The tops of the shoulders kind of serves to, again, slightly broaden the top of the body and then the belts will make the waist look smaller too. This one, uh, another 1940s one, and again that shorter A-line skirt, but you've got this really the little necktie but mainly the kind of tulip shaped sleeves which is kind of echoed by folds at the hips this 40s pattern we do have the little puffy sleeves and you can see how the sleeve is just kind of shaped into that little sort of curvy arrowhead there to provide a bit of interest and then of course the main bit of interest coming from panel at the waist with the scallops under the bodice which in this one is sort of emphasised, I like that we're having three buttons uh, on each scallop and then it's gathered at the yoke to sort of flare out nicely over the bust area and the extended shoulder so again creating still that rather feminine shape this one which this little kind of bib either have it plain like in this example or you can emphasize this little kind of bib arrangement that then goes under the belt and comes out into the pockets sleeves which I think the puffs are achieved by pleats like my dark red dress and then pleated into a sleeve here to create it creates a really nice shape don't even like that actually this pattern and if you can read those words there but what it says is hat and flowers included so, so you've got a pattern to make these flowers that you can add to that sweetheart neckline uh, and then you can make yourself a matching hat with those flowers and then there's a little alternative shown of picking out the yoke in a contrast colour. I hope, hope you enjoyed your look at my dress collection and some of the wonderful details were added to these gorgeous wartime era dresses and if you're uh, a collector of vintage uh, I hope it inspires your collection and if you're a dressmaker you've got lots of ideas on details that you could add to your dresses and war suits too and uh, we'll say goodbye won't we have a puffer <laughs> you look at the camera look at the camera don't sulk <laughs> bye from me and raisiny rabbit no not on camera rabbit kins not on camera no. sweet so the 40s um when you or Oh no, now you're going to pant into the microphone again. Stop panting. Don't breathe. Don't breathe at all.